Okay, and I guess I'm still on, because right now we're going to show a clip, a video clip of former attorney Ramsey Clark. And uh, I'll just tell you a little bit of Ramsey Clark. Uh, he was the attorney general uh, uh, of the United States under LBJ, Lyndon Baines Johnson. After he left that position, he went to Vietnam and he saw what he was doing there and he became an anti-war activist of the highest level. Blaze has traveled all, uh, excuse me, Ramsey has traveled all over the world witnessing what the United States has been doing to people in poor countries and killing millions of them, sanctioning them and oppressing them. A film titled Citizen Clark, A Life of Principle uh, was made by Joseph Stillman. It came out a couple of years ago. This video clip we're going to see is an edited version of a talk Ramsey gave in 1998 at the Holman Methodist Church, the church of the Reverend James Lawson. Uh, I was there that night. It's titled, uh, this talk is titled Plutocracy, Wealth Governs This Country. And I want to say this was filmed by Ralph Cole. And it's part of my film, what I learned about this foreign policy, what you're going to see. And due to the health reasons, Ramley, Ramsey could not be with us here tonight. But here's this eight minute clip of Ramsey Clark. The war movement for three decades. Ramsey has traveled all over the world and has been in Iraq every year since the sanctions were imposed. If you think it's been a long evening, <clears throat> wait till I get through. <laughs> but we're going to have to take some long evenings because this planet is deeply troubled and the greatest cause of that trouble is our own government. In the speech that James, Reverend James Lawson referred to that Martin Luther King made on April the 5th, 1967, <clears throat> the most startling thing that he said at the time, the thing that caused the most anger and hatred to be directed toward him, was this sentence. The greatest purveyor of violence on earth is my own government. 31 years ago, why anyone would have been startled is hard to say because it was an obvious fact, but apparently we need more education in the obvious than we do examination of the obscure and unknown. Last year, U.S. military expenditures, with all the suffering on the planet, all the sickness and hunger and ignorance and pain. The American military budget was $265 billion. The second largest government expenditure for militarism was $48 billion. And that was the Russian Federation. And the United States military expenditures exceed those of the top 12 government expenditures on earth by themselves and are more than a third of all the military expenditures on the planet. We have a war party in this country and we've had it all along. And you can call it Democrat for a while, you can call it Republican for a while, but it has been the special economic interests in this society that have governed us from the time that we founded our governments on this continent. And the people have never controlled those governments. We call ourselves the world's greatest democracy. We are absolutely a plutocracy. It's the most obvious thing in the world. Wealth governs this country. And wealth uses military violence to control the rest of the world as best it can. And we're responsible. And we will pay the price for it. If we don't control our violence, if we don't control the effect of the symbol of our glorification of violence on our children and on the rest of the planet, uh, then this human species is going to be the first to destroy itself completely. And that's the road the United States government has put us on. The single most pertinent statement on this issue was by Henry Kissinger. When the Iran-Iraq war began, over a million 
very young men lost their lives in that war. Henry Kissinger said at the beginning of the war, eight years of war, I hope they kill each other. And that was exactly our policy. What could be better? <laughs> Have them kill each other. Then who has to worry about that region anymore, you know? And don't think that's not exactly our policy. All over the world where there are poor peoples living today, that's the solution to overpopulation. Call it triage, whatever you want to call it. Let them kill each other. Let them die. And they're dying all over Asia, Africa, and Latin America where the masses of poor people live. They're expendable there as they are expendable here. As appalling as what we've done and what we've threatened to Iraq, the worst violence that all of our technology could unleash, and then the strangulation of the sanctions, the thing we have to realize is it's what our government leadership has been doing all along. It's not terribly different than how we addressed the folks that were here to meet the Mayflower standing on the dock, the North American Aboriginal peoples, the Indians as we call them. A long, steady course of destruction of those peoples. It's not terribly different than what we did to the slaves that were brought over in chains from Africa, those that survived the transit, which wasn't easy. You look in our history books, you don't read about a Philippine-American war. You read the Philippine history books, and they know about a Philippine-American war. We call it the Spanish-American war. We were liberating the Filipinos. We killed more than a million. Now we're bragging about the <coughs> covert actions we're going to engage in against Iraq, do you doubt for a minute that they're planning covert actions in half a dozen other places right now? That we'll react to them five years after the misery has begun and the people have been devastated? What we have to realize is that if we don't stand up and stop this now, if we can't stop these sanctions in Iraq and if with them we can't prohibit any further use of sanctions that are designed to impact on the poor, then there are no poor people on the planet that will ever be safe from our government and its future acts. It's imperative that we stop them in Iraq today and that we prohibit them in the future as applied to any people because it is a weapon of mass destruction. We have to stop military interventions by our government completely. We cannot permit more U.S. military interventions in foreign countries. We have to stop economic interventions We've got to cancel foreign debt that has enslaved most of the poor countries of the planet. Cancel it. So let's organize through every effort and opportunity we have in our families, and in our churches, in our mosques, and in our synagogues, and in our schools, and at our jobs. A massive coalition committed to end militarism and economic exploitation by our government. Thank you, Dr.